Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Pack one, pick one, Io Vecna. Open this one already. Fine, first pick as it's pretty flexible, goes in any deck. What else? Magic Missile, it's great. Potential two for one, or three for one if you're really lucky. So that's pretty high up on my list here. Yeah, that's about it. There's a Null Hunter, one of the better commons in green. A Spy, if you can make it unblockable, can be nice for blue-black. Yeah, there's some other playables. Dungeoneer It's totally fine if you're trying to venture. But kind of flanking the missile over Eye this time. Okay, could go red-green, take Targnar, Demon Fang, Null, and then would love to get some of these Null Hunters on the wheel, even though that's not super likely. What else is there in the pack? The Outlander, decent green card. So we are passing some good green. There's a Guild Thief in blue, can be okay. But yeah, I'm kind of okay committing and taking uh, Targnar. Third pack, doesn't have anything amazing. Some okay green with the Dryad's Shepherd. And then you see a pair of goblins, fine combo trick slash way to make some tokens. So which do we prefer? Don't think red green's particularly interested in Shepherd, so probably between Dryad and goblins. Can always take the temple as kind of a tapped dual land. Which is also reasonable, but... Um, red-green. Not really a go-white deck, typically, but could still be a useful Trumpet Blast effect. And, uh... Dryad's fine, although red-green's a deck that has a lot of two-drops, so... The value of Dryad goes down a bit when our plan is to cast a two-mana creature on turn two. Well, goblins do get better in multiples, so don't mind another one. Herdgorger is also okay, kind of pricey, but you get what you pay for. Some decent white cards in that pack too. Wow, fifth big priest. This card should not be here. But uh, weaponry is okay. I mean, I could pivot and take priest and then... Maybe go red-white. Weaponry is okay, but not amazing. So I could be convinced to take Priest and maybe Pivot. We're not super committed to green, and we've passed a lot of good green at the start of the draft. Yeah, I don't think I can really pass Priest here. Alright, Captain's great. Don't know if we're really going to do the dungeon exploring, but a blink dog is good if we're going to be red-white, because presumably we'll end up with a few equipments, and double strike plus equipment's great. Although captain's going to be pretty great in our deck no matter what. So I'm kind of liking captain over blink dog, even though dog has potentially more upside if we do end up red-white. Still a chance we end up red-green. Okay, that's a late blue rare. It's not a bomb, but it's still pretty good. So kind of surprised to see it here. Not a fan of Compelled Jewel. And probably don't need Windfall in this deck. So I guess I'll rare draft. Not passing up on much. Okay, more blue cards with a late Windseer. That's kind of surprising. Paladin Shields is an equipment, but not really the one we're looking for here. And don't care too much about the Null Camp. So I can take a Windseer, speculate on blue, or take an Evolving Wilds, which will most likely make my deck. My eighth pick Windseer is definitely a sign. Still have that true Polymorph. And this was our opening pack. 
unsurprised to see that the null is gone. So yeah, probably ambitious to go green after passing two nulls early on. So we might pivot into blue-red here. And then I think conjure over power of persuasion. Veteran goes with equipment, you come to river, just a fine bounce spell. Uh, not a fan of sudden insight, but if we lack author card draw effects, I might still play it. So yeah, we tried to be red-green, but green got cut off pretty early. And then we could pass a pretty late priest. White didn't seem super open, although we had the option to take a few more white cards. But went with a more flexible red. And then, yeah, very late blue cards with Polymorph, Windseer. So, it might be blue-red. We did take the red cards pretty early on, so it's not like red's necessarily open. But we've got a decent number of uh, playable red cards. Alrighty, so we'll see what pack 2 delivers. So far, could still pivot in all sorts of directions. How about green? Yeah, I mean, I could just take a, a wind seer stick to blue. But Gnawbone's pretty strong. Pricey at 7 mana, but... Have a Targnar, so... Could play that as well. There's also blue dragon. Not as exciting as old Gnawbone, but to be honest, the, the difference between a 5-5 flyer and a 7-7 flyer is not huge. And this one we should be able to cast. So, you know, this is close. I do have a few good blue cards. Blue is the open color, but mythic rare. Do we have any synergy with Teleportation Circle? It's good with Priests. I guess I could just take a Priest and hope to Wheel Circle somehow. Yeah, I'm kind of missing that Evolving Wilds now if I want to play three or four colors. Look, I'll just take the Priests. Nothing else is too exciting here. Apprentice without venturing, scan a medium. Another Targnar. Unicorn's good with double priest, but that's about it. Null Hunter. Kind of like Null Hunter. Who knows, maybe we just <laughs> pivot into green white. We'll see. Prowler's not bad either. I'll take a Hunter. We might still be red-green too. Bugbear it is. Barbarian could fix my mana with the treasure. Double red's not the easiest to cast, although for just red-green... Maybe it's fine. I guess if we somehow wield that... 4 mana white enchantment that flickers a creature. Barbarians also combo with it. Sure. More goblins. I mean, battle cry goblin with double pair of goblins is pretty nice. I'm down. Alright, so, I mean, we haven't seen a ton of exciting blue cards in this direction outside of the dragon in the first pack. So I'm okay ditching blue. So we're red-green, maybe with the white splash. And this pack I can take... Bard's not bad. Uh, looking at my curve... I'll take a bard. 
don't have any four drops yet. Can enable the pack tactics nicely. Weaponry gives us more fixing too. It's kind of a, a weak removal spell. Might prefer the Herd Gorger to give us something at the top end. And then maybe I don't splash white at, after all. Uh, Circle of the Moon Druid's perfect for enabling pack tactics. So I think I like that over Barbarian. I'll take a Boots of Speed. Nothing here. I guess there's a chance I play Null Camp if I'm short on playables. Hopefully we don't have to main deck Plummet. Alright, so we didn't wield the Rare Enchantment, not too surprised by that. And it looks like we're just red-green, despite not picking up a ton of green in the first two packs. Okay, Owlbear, get in there. Not a fan of treasure chests. There's also another Null Hunter, so this is close. But, you know, Owlbear's pretty sweet. Don't have any 5-drops yet. Helps me hit my land drops for Gnawbone. Yeah, there's also Swarming Goblins, good synergy with the Battlecry Goblin and Pair of Goblins. Although that one we can realistically still wheel. Okay. Already have a Boots of Speed. The Hunter could be okay in this deck. We're pretty good at enabling pack tactics. Not a fan of Wish. So it's between Hunter and Weaponry. Probably want a Hunter. Not the best synergy for Cell Sword. Probably better in Black Red. So I'll take my Weaponry now, I suppose. Another Valor Singer. Windfall could also be reasonable if our plan is to ramp into Gnawbone as quickly as possible. And we already have double Valor Singer, so sure. So we've got a reasonable curve. And considering we changed direction once or twice, should still get enough playables in the end. A rapier seems good in this deck where we have a ton of creatures and tokens to equip. A ranger also would have been fine. Could consider shepherd or even bull strength. But I'll go with the uh, equipment. Ooh, bard class sadly doesn't do anything, but ooh, bard class. On call a rare. Uh, synergy with Gnawbone, I guess, but I'll take uh, another pair of goblins. If we can wield a 5 mana goblin that makes more tokens, that will work out nicely. Could use an extra 2 drop creature. Uh, let's see. Don't think I'm playing longbow. Earth cult elementals, kind of whatever. I guess I'll rare draft then. Could technically play Orb to ramp me into Gnawbone, but if it that's my only dragon, it's probably not good enough. Uh, not the best synergy with Basilisk. Don't have any fight effects, but it is a 2-drop, and I guess we can pump it up with uh, Singer, potentially. Plays defense well. Could also take the Spiked Pit Trap. Okay, we wield the Goblins. Rare drafts. 
Don't think we're splashing Gretchen. All right. So blue red could have worked out too had we taken the author dragon, but kind of excited to try out a more aggressive red green beatdown deck. Don't have much removal, so we're mainly trying to swarm the opponents with a pair of goblins and then bump up the team. And yeah, this is 40 cards, so we don't need to make any cuts. Couple curve toppers. Mana base queued towards red. Yeah, this seems fine. Okay, so we've got a plan. That plan is to make treasure to ramp into Gnawbone to make more treasure. We've got a Hobgoblin to distract them in the meantime. Opponent not fetching with Evolving Wilds yet, maybe postponing the decision. Alright, that's a good one. Although I'll still take it out with the weaponry here. Now black whites could easily have some answers for Nobone. Just gotta hope they don't have one in hand. This is an instant. So what am I discarding? Opponents is in the lost mine. Yeah, I think Basilisk can go. Keeping land saves me a treasure. Alright, I think it's time to enter the bone zone. Don't touch it. You can look at it from a safe distance. That's fine. Mm, that's acceptable. Ooh, Paladin class is scary. Well, I got my wish, I get to attack with the Gnawbone. And this does what exactly? Makes a million treasure. Alright, I'm down. So... Could even play the Goblin first. Sure. And I don't have to activate it if I don't want. Could also magic missile first. Then I can still pump with the goblin. And reducing the number of creatures in play also seems useful. Alright, now with all this treasure, the 
Battle cry goblins even scarier. Okay, so they can tap down Nobo now, but I've got some other creatures to work with. Probably no reason to play out my lands. Eh, maybe there is. Sure, whatever. Yep. So these are both must blocks, basically, so I think I can attack with the team. Get an extra token, which we can also pump to infinity. Yeah, that was pretty disgusting, Ponan not having an answer for Nobone worked out. Got some powerful cards in hand. Question is, are we going to survive long enough to get to them? Don't have ramp this time around. And without early plays, we're probably going to get run over. Then again, I do have a lot of cheap cards I can draw. Maybe on the play this was more reasonable, on the draw it's probably too slow. <laughs> okay. Well, I see more than just a pair of goblins. Oh man, what do I put on the bottom? This is excruciating. I want to keep my 2-drop. But how can I possibly break up the triple pair? Do I bottom a land? Is that too greedy? We're on the draw. Yeah, we'll draw a land. This isn't the coward stream. Reward it. That unicorn has no idea what's about to hit them. Alright, it's a good blocker, sadly. So given that we're not on the aggro plan anymore, maybe I should... I guess they gained life, so I can't even ambush the unicorn. Yeah, that 3 4 is kind of annoying, not gonna lie. Nah, I think we're probably just gonna play the boots, make another pair of goblins, and then see if we can do something next turn. Yeah, that fourth point of toughness, pretty relevant. Now you know which card would be good here. A nice battle cry goblin. Opponent attacks with their only good blocker, okay. I see, I see. I mean, we've got our triple pair, I guess our opponent gets to have their pair as well. So they're currently in the dungeon of the Mad Mage, gets to scry one. So... Hear me out, what if we equip a goblin and attack with everyone? 
we grow the hunter, they probably put Dungeoneer on the hunter. And then we get to trade a bunch. I mean, what else are we doing here? These goblins weren't made for blocking. Nobody expects the third pair of goblins. Alright. Bones at six. Just need another pair of goblins off the top. Nah, don't bring our cleric gonna gain life. Life gains cheating. Times two. Yeah, one three lines up pretty well against the one one as it turns out. So we need some of our beefier creatures now. Could always top deck Gnawbone, I guess. Or the Warcry Goblin, but probably not gonna have many goblins left after this next turn. Yeah, with double Dawnbringer Cleric in hand, it makes sense why they didn't want to block with the Unicorn. So I can jump and then trade for the Dungeoneer. Let's say I top deck something big. I can at least try to block the Unicorn and not be dead on board. Because let's say I Take three down to one. I guess I would have three extra goblins left. But then I'm still dead if I top deck Knobbone. Probably not gonna work out either way. Yeah, the six mana giant would be decent. Well, good thing we bottomed that land early on, since we've only drawn lands and a boots of speed this game. <laughs> Alright, GG's. It was not meant to be. Alright, so I can buy this. Ooh, a two drop. Barbarian ready to destroy the trap. Ooh. Man, do we go for the map or the trap? Tough choice. Feel like the map might be better. Also could have made a treasure to equip the boots, but I think I prefer killing the map there. Windfall's good when we're flooding a bit. So I could do that now so I can still equip the boots. Or I can attack first and see what's up. How relevant is that treasure going to be? Depends what we draw, of course. I think I just attack for five and then... I mean, the upside of equipping is that we would give first strike, but can't think of many flash creatures in green-white. It's not like they're gonna have a pair of goblins. All right, we'll just pass then. The 
they can activate the trap. Ochre jelly instead. Big enough to survive my magic missile. Yeah, jelly's good. Alright, gonna have to read Targnar. So, with pack tactics, attacking creatures get plus one plus so, and I can double its power and toughness until end of turn. So what if I play Targonar, equip it with the boots, then I'll have four mana left, so I could still double its power. Captain will be for power first strike, so they will probably block Barbarian. Or they could trade for Targnar. Yeah, both of those outcomes are probably acceptable. And then magic missiles could finish off the jelly. Although I could just double and then they're dead, so yeah, actually this doesn't work. They had to block something else. Alright, Targnar. Pretty good card. Yeah, the sense okay. Barbarian can make a treasure to ramp into the hill giant. Would like to draw two drop. And then maybe a land. I guess the voice recognition thought a pair of goblins counted as a two drop, which is understandable. It's technically two drops. So if we want to be petty, we could destroy the opponent's treasure with our barbarian. I think I'd rather make my own. Uh-oh. I guess we lose. Probably forced to trade here now. Although I'm not sure how we're supposed to beat Ranger class. with a pair of goblins. Can gain some life. Only game plan really is to try to run the opponent out of creatures somehow. Although that's unlikely to work once they level it up. So far so good, I guess, but... Opponent levels up. Probably want to main phase this. And then do we have more red or green two drops? 
think it's pretty evenly split. Might be slightly in favor of red. Alright, pair of goblins plus battle cries. A combo. Although probably playing Herd Gorger first. On the splash. Nice. So they can make that a 4 4 double strike. I mean. I guess this still blocks it. I'll hang on to my treasure. Need it for uh, old Gnawbone. Yeah, and this is where things start getting messy. I mean, it's not like we have much removal for 4-4 for, for double strike creatures. Yeah, that's probably game over. That's maybe a way back into it. Gonna have to chump drists with our pair of goblins, I guess. So do I take 16 and keep my battle cry goblin or do I jump now? 16 is a lot of damage. Is this going to do anything for me later? Probably not. All right, that's a lot of chum blockers. Come on, Nobun, carry us to victory. So I can use one pair as blockers and the other one to pump Nobun for the win. fine to put one here and then I could trade Basilisk or I could leave it as an extra attacker in case we need it. Which is probably fine. Owlbear and Bard can gain life. Yeah, that could keep them alive here. 
Hopefully they go for the owlbear. Bard, gain three. Alright, so in that case, take my draw step and I'll probably have to do it with Gnawbone in two turns. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. According to my math, they should be dead. Alright, Nobo into the rescue, beating Ranger class. Although, we all know that the pair of goblins was a true savior. On the draw, couple equipment, no two drop. Don't love it, but probably can't mulligan either. Alright, there's my two drop. Pair of Goblin is just a better unit of measurement than anything else, really. Yeah, one Goblin is just half a pair of Goblin. It's pretty straightforward, really. Okay. Opponent really wanted to grow the Thief. Hey there. Yeah, Druid's probably the play. Switches to a 2-4, perfect for blocking Guild Thief, and then next turn. Never mind. Alright, at least we can still attack back. How about a speedy singer? And then they can trade here. Yeah, I guess that's still fine. Three, or I could not attack with the druids, just send these two since we can pump Hunter here and still enable pack tactics. That seems better. Although if we're not careful we're gonna kill the opponent before casting Old Knobbone. Okay. Well, probably want to owl bear second main. And uh now what? Still fine attacking with singer and hunter.
fine with the trade. If it have the minus two minus so, we can respond with a rapier. Yep. Could also let that happen and then play Owlbear anyways, but... Guild Thief seems worth killing. And then I can still move my equipment to be mana efficient. And put it probably on the Hunter. Ooh, Magic Missile. Looking good. Does mean I wouldn't be able to play all Gnawbone, but, you know. Could uh, let some other cards have their fun. Yeah, when Magic Missile is good, it's really good. Especially powerful against kind of the blue-black rogue strategy that has a ton of tiny creatures. We're on the play, I've got Gnawbone. No treasures to ramp into it, but hopefully we'll get there eventually. Old Gnawbone costs three and a half pair of goblins. Or I guess two and a half, if you measure it the mana cost. Uh, probably lead with druids. Should have gone with a pair of goblins. Yeah, we'll try and ambush that with the goblins, I think. Fowler Singer. Ooh. Time for an owlbear. Listen to it. Oh yes, that sweet, sweet enter the battlefield sound of a confused bear and eagle. So Barbarian Make a Treasure lets me play Nobun. They've already used Grim Bounty, hopefully they don't have another answer. Don't mind a double block. They might have a trick, but I don't really care about any of these. Or I could just take three. What trick would they have? Yeah, it could be the Manticore. I'll just take the three. Drider does have reach. So could attack with uh, Barbarian. Probably need to keep them back for Drider. Especially if they do have something like Manticore, I don't want to block with Nobone. Although Manticore could still finish it off after they block with the Drider. So it's kind of rough. Yeah. I guess we'll bait out whatever they had last turn, so waiting did not necessarily pay off here. Alright, they had the Manticore, but the way this played out, I'm pretty happy. Since we still have a Gnawbone. A Rapier. Well, I can make a lot of mana, potentially. Oh, 
I probably could have afforded to play the rapier and then moved its sorcery speed to the singer. Although there's a chance we can ambush. All right, let's hope they reveal three lanes. All right, almost boots and two lanes. Could have been worse. Axe Blade draws a card. Still gonna be close. No Grim Bounty. That's unfortunate. Alright, now it's gonna be tough. Probably have to trade. Magic Missile, pretty great here. Still doesn't win me the game, but it's a start. Just need a battle crying goblin off the top. So if I attack and they have nothing, we're good. I mean, if they have removal, I'm probably going to lose anyway. I think I'm fine attacking here. Mm, don't know if it matters if I move the rapier. I guess it could matter. Oh, they found my Warcry Goblin. Although they can give it haste. Or no, never mind, they can give it haste. So now I'm dead. That's unfortunate. Yeah, the fact that this fixes for colors means they were able to still pump it. Oh, they didn't go for it. Yeah, we would have been dead on board if they activated the Battle Cry Goblin. Because it gives itself haste as well. So, well, I guess I'm not going to complain. So, Hunter only deals damage to creatures. Pair of Goblins, what does that do for me? can pump the Trampling Hunter. So let's say we attack with both. Captain gains first strike. Yeah, even if they put five in front of the Hunter, that would be fine. So I think we're fine just sending the team and not using the Hunter's ability. Yeah, we'll attack. Decline. And yeah, pair of goblins winning another game. Well, we would have died if our opponents was more familiar with all the cards they had, but uh yeah, sometimes you gotta hope your opponent makes a mistake to win. On the play. No turn two Null Hunter necessarily, but Weapon Recon fix for mana. And so can a Barbarian. I think this is still good enough. Even though it's not ideal.
Opponents get something. Bank of holding. We can maybe destroy. Ooh, forest over the top. Yeah, sometimes you need to get lucky. Opponent exiling a 6 drop, which they were maybe hoping to get back later. Could wait on Barbarian, play Captain, although it's less mana efficient. Next turn I could maybe go Weaponry plus Captain. Alright, that's a little bit too large for the weaponry. So magic missile it is. Or I could Valor Singer, get the Barbarian through. And then next turn we're still potentially able to magic missile. Yeah, kinda like that too. Not sure how likely they are to block. Either way, I think we're happy there. So if I draw land, I can kill both with weaponry plus missile. Dagger's dangerous with a death touch creature. Alright, so we can kill both here. Seems worth it. Alternatively, I can just pump Singer itself. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, I'll just kill it. Keep up the pressure. And between Valor Singer and Hunter, we should still be able to set up good attacks. Another spawn. Okay. A pair of goblins, you say. I guess we'll win. So yeah, red-green aggro. Just need to curve out. Pack tactics. Pretty straightforward keyword, but it is effective and limited, where just curving out with creatures is an effective strategy. Don't need too many fancy rares, although Nobbone definitely saved the day a few times. Pack one, pick one here. Triumphant Adventure, a nice incentive to draft a black-white, complete a dungeon as quickly as possible deck. And uh, yeah, not much else here. I guess a Paladin's okay for an equipment strategy. Dragon Turtle is a good one. Probably be the pick here. Ooh, adult gold dragon. Awesome card for draft. Might even see a bit of constructed play, who knows. And then of course a pair of goblins has uh, definitely done some good work for us today. Dragon's Fire, also a great card. It's a very stacked pack. Wizard Spellbook, I've had a bit of experience with this in Limited 2. Slow card draw engine, but will definitely take over a stalled game. Treasure chest, I'll probably pass. Power word kill, even though it doesn't kill some of the bigger dragons, is still pretty efficient. So I think that gets the nod over Wizard class, which is also quite good.
and long rests for the slow grindy matchups if you need some card advantage. I think Owlbear is just a better pack one pick one in general. Would probably take it over the Outlander too. The Elf is also quite good. All right, sweet. That's going to be it for me today. I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.